Hello and welcome back to another video and today we are going to answer one of the most common questions that we get about wedges and that is should you match your pitching wedge to your gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge or should you match your wedge to your iron set? Mike, it's a common question we get all the time, isn't it? Yeah, I get it a lot and uh, you know, again, common thing for us is you know, the wedge is always going to match the iron set but um, interesting to see this test today. Yeah, and there, there's certainly a purpose for using a specialty wedge that matches the rest of your again, gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge, because a lot of the newer wedges, including what we're gonna be testing today, the Vokey SM9, comes in a stronger loft. We are going to be testing a 46 degree versus our tester. Ian, what's the loft of your normal pitching wedge? 46 degrees, RB. So uh, yeah, I mean, something that's been crossing my mind. Uh, we've, uh, when we had Aaron on the, on the podcast and then obviously talking to those guys about, you know, ordering some SM9s for ourselves, you know, it kind of came up in my mind, you know, should I, should I maybe go towards the, the uh, 46? Yeah, I use that loft anyway. Uh, is that something that I should, you know, take advantage of? Maybe increase the repertoire of wedge shots that I play um, with, with having a, a wedge like that? Or am I giving up something in, in the full shot uh, use of that particular club and you know I'm curious to, to test that today. Usually the biggest thing is there's is the ball speed and then the spin because anytime we're dealing with a specialty wedge a lot of times we're dealing with a, a more precisely milled face something that's going to reduce uh, water be more hydrophobic have mm -hmm. it be because of the milling pattern or because of a coating and we use hydrophobic because Ping made it uh, kind of put it into our our language as, as far as um, wedges are is mm -hmm. concerned. But uh, so we're going to test the, the Vokey SM9, yep. 46 degree, versus your own current pitching wedge, which is, what, what, are, we, what are you playing right now? You're a TC201. Um, so again, it's a, it's a fantastic feeling pitching wedge. It has a pre-worn leading edge. It is a really nice shape. I'm very particular uh, about pitching wedges, and this is about as nice of a, a, a pitching wedge shape as I've seen that matches the set. I love the look of uh, the, the standard 46 on the SM9. Aaron made me a, one of the most incredible looking gap wedges I've ever seen. He kind of bent some uh, offset off of a, off of a wedge and, and made me a 50 last, and if I always said if I could get a pitching wedge that looked like that with basically where the transition from the, the hose will just go straight into the leading edge without any offset, I would love that. So. Um, yeah, I'm interested in this one, uh, you know, especially when we get into some, uh, maybe not so much or, you know, interested about the full shots, but I'm more interested when we start doing partial swings and if we start introducing some other elements such as moisture, what the trade-offs are with, with a, a face that effectively is the same face as a four iron, five iron, six iron through the set, and one that has milling and, and more texture between the grooves and, and hopefully more uh, friction and spin retention. Perfect. So, Mike, tell us what we got set up here for the, our, our target. We are 130 yards out and uh, all, all square uh, kind of elements. So, 130 yards. Faraz, what do you got here? Mira first? Mira first, Michael. Good swing there. Yeah, it's a nice, comfortable number. 130 is kind of like a nice, smooth wedge for me. I don't really like to hit full out wedges. I always feel like I start sacrificing. Uh, some some kind of dispersion with that. I like to hit them pretty smooth. And that's that's a good takeaway as well. Is for for players who are looking when it comes to gapping, right? Is you know it's not always necessarily worried about the full full swing. Mm -hmm. It's like what is your comfortable swing and your comfortable yardage? Because you know it's not very often you're going to be trying to absolutely rip the cover off a pitching wedge. No, no, there's, there's not many times where that's of any, any value to, to someone. You know, maybe if you're trying to get through some rough or, or you, you know, you have to create a ad little additional speed to extract the ball from a particular lie. Other than that, try not to do it. Oh, so sad. Oh. I thought that I had a little chance, that one. All right, so those are some good swings. Let's move on to the, the Vokey 46 degree and uh, see what we can do. I think one of the things we're talking about, do we use a set pitching wedge or a, a specialist pitching wedge? We do, in the Bay, we actually talk much more about do we use a set gap wedge or a specialist gap wedge? We, we can almost, the, the pitching wedge is a bit of a given in most scenarios in TXG 
um, for our club selection. We probably have to do a little bit more thinking when it comes to the gap wedge. So, um, yeah, just to bear that in mind, this, this isn't something we're, we're expecting or, or recommending many of the kind of mid to higher handicappers to, to really seek out. Exactly. Another one, chance. Oh, tidy. Wee bit thin. Swing. Yeah, that, that felt like a good one. So. We're not really seeing much of a distance discrepancy, which no. is quite nice. I'd, I would be lying if I didn't notice the build difference. There's a little bit of a subtle build difference with the wedge flex shaft. So, you know, I'm definitely feeling some different kind of feedback on the club from that. Um, but overall from the head, it feels very, very solid. Yeah. I like what I'm feeling. Another good strike. Nicely done. So let's take a quick look at the, the full scale numbers there, or the full swings numbers, I should say. Very close. Yeah. A little bit more spin, but almost, almost exactly the same. What I, what I find interesting is that there, you, you generally, like launch angle is going to be controlled through like friction, right? And there's a little bit more friction, you would think, on the, on the Vokey, but our launch angle went up, you know, about a degree and a half there, mm -hmm. which is, is kind of interesting. But as far as spin is concerned, total yards, distance, like they're almost bang on. So from a full swing perspective, I think how good the like, companies are at designing mat, like pitching wedges that blend into your actual wedges, mm -hmm. that specialty wedge, a lot of times it wasn't always the case. Yeah. It used to be that they'd spin a lot more or you didn't get the same kind of ball speed mm -hmm. out of it. We're at a point now where you know, if you really wanted to, you could put that in your bag and not really notice a difference. One thing we have to see because you make a great point. People expect this to spin way more because there's, there's kind of milling between the grooves and there's all these other things. We don't necessarily want to look at the, the, the grooves between the grooves as friction, you know, producing kind of designs. If we stuck a racing slick on the tire, we want full traction. We don't want any grooves, do, do we? If you two F1 fans here, yeah. <laughs> like what do they drive in, in, in you know, warm conditions? full tire surface on the track. Mm -hmm. When do we use grooves? When we have to try and extract some moisture or something, some debris from the tire to the track because you, you want to try and kind of get that out of the way. That's the purpose of, of this. So, you know, I don't really think the full swing clean wedge test is going to show up too much of a difference. I mean, I can see exactly where from the delivery standpoint, I can see exactly where that that one, uh, one and a half degrees of launches, if you go to club data, you know, we have a one degree or less, just less than one degree of dynamic loft via a slightly more open face, mm -hmm. right? There, there it is right there. Dynamic lie angle, we're a little bit more toe down. We know the more loft we have, the, the more we tilt the, the face angle, you know, it's right, it's all right there in front of us why that is. So as fitters, we have to know when to know it's the club doing it or when it's the delivery doing it and when is the club doing it to the delivery to do it yeah. right that's yeah. the that's where yeah. the magic lies like when you can decipher the difference between all those sorts of things but when the net result is kind of the same uh, i could feel it in my swing i mean that was me i was completely me kind of holding on to a few mm. of those uh those sm9s i could i could completely feel that yeah um so i love them both from for full swings i, I couldn't i couldn't really separate them i wouldn't I wouldn't say I have a favorite at this point. Cool, so let's move into some partial shots. Yep. Uh, and then we'll try something a little fun where we're gonna go to try a little wet golf ball. Yeah. And see what happens. Let's do that. Does a little half shot like this bring back memories of the homeland? I was homeland gonna say, I feel like I'm in the homeland right here, RB. Flighting that down.
Hey, one thing, you make hitting 75-yard shots look easy with a pitching wedge. <laughs> Crispy. Strikes better than uh, it would be, to be honest, I think, if I was hitting a sand wedge. Yeah. Our turf's just a little greener than what you might find in August in Scotland, though. Yeah, good strike. Called that distance. I think that's where, you know, the launch monitors and uh, doing a little bit of work on them, you can calibrate yourself. I always emphasize at the start of the season, if you are someone who doesn't have access to a range outdoors where you can kind of get on the grass, best case scenario, right? Always, we, we know that. But if you can't do that, there's a lot of good work can be done in a bay with mm -hmm. a launch monitor where you can calibrate your speed and length of swing to a distance. We talked about the wedge matrix a while back with our good friend Gareth Rufleski and you know, that's, that's something that, that is going on in my mind is, is, is calibrating that wedge matrix, you know, where to take the club back, where to take it through, and what's my cadence on, on that swing. That's how I create distance control. I mean, we talked about it. You'd, you'd have a maybe a harder time hitting that crisp of a shot with a 56-degree wedge than you did with a pitching wedge. I mean, if, no you know, if you know your wedge system, you practice it over the winter, and you're 75 yards out on a golf mm. course and you can pull a pitching wedge, I'd rather hit it like that than... Yeah potentially, you know, thin one with a 56 or whatever it is. So without um, a doubt, Mike, definitely yeah. impressive. So let's move into and let's start. Let's try it with the wet, the wet wedge test. A little bit of a tongue, tongue yes. tip there, <laughs> uh, but we'll do a wet wedge test yeah. with both. Again, using on a partial shot mm -hmm. here. And I think the other thing to note as well, like before we get into the wet wedge shot is the face size can be different depending on what your iron set is versus what that like specialty pitching wedge could be. Mm -hmm. So out of the rough, you could gain a little bit more control, a little bit more speed because you're, there literally is less face area for that club to get tangled up into the grass. So let's get these, uh, let's get these club faces and golf balls wet and see some shots. Let's do it. Okay, so we've done this before. We kind of know what to expect. Loss of friction, higher launch, you know, not really disrupting because we're not dealing with any other matter other than water. We shouldn't expect too much ball speed drop off, but launch conditions could change. Uh, we'll see if there's a little bit more retention from the, the club that has the design in order to do that and, and extract that water away. Different. Totally different. Clean strike. 15, so we got sub six there. Mm -hmm. That one definitely looked like it took off higher. Mm -hmm. Well, but yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, to be honest, yeah. with, with the amount of spin uh, that these are keeping. 52 is our lowest one. Okay. Let's move to the Volk. Good swing there. Pretty good, 7,000 RPMs and it's wet. Yeah. Really good. A good strike. Nice. Streak free. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, at TXG, we try and do our best to create some laboratory type settings. And, you know, we come up with hypotheses, try and prove them. And this here is some pretty interesting results when it comes to the partial shots with a wet specialty wedge versus your own set pitching wedge. 
one of the one of the coolest ones we've done in a while, and we've done this test before and, and kind of been surprised and, and that type of thing. But this this is really cool. I just it always gets me right. Mm -hmm. So we see launch conditions flip around. We saw the the TC two hundred one on the launch angle was the lowest all the way through it with full and then the partial. Then the minute we lose the friction, launch goes up. And then the minute the SM9 you know, gains friction, launch comes down. So they completely flip launch conditions. You know, I would say the SM9 in the wet performed the best of any, any of the, the launch conditions that we saw. So it I mean, retained so much performance. The thing about wet, wet conditions or variable conditions is the variance you can potentially get in the ball flight. Maybe you don't know if you're going to get a flyer or you're going to get a little bit loss of friction. Look at that standard deviation. 113 standard deviation versus 493. There's no guessing. And that's where the yardage standard deviation is, is literally zero because it's done the same thing. That results in proximity gains and against the field. When you hit that first wet shot with the Voki, we all kind of looked like, wait, what? Yeah. Like it actually like it went up quite a bit. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating to see, especially to your point, like standard deviation going in that much smaller when you, know, you would expect the variable variance to increase when you add another variable. Definitely. Now, again, we're trying to create the same scenario over and over and over again, but to see the spin go up more than, what, like again, almost 1,000 RPM just over, mm -hmm. and then also see the variance kind of really shrink compared to your own set pitching wedge. Yeah. You might have a new pitching wedge. Um, this, this would decide it for me, right? So we're in a test. We've said full swings, nothing really in it. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Partials, both performed quite nice, but secretly I quite liked the turf interaction with Voki. I didn't say that when we were hitting it, but I was like, yeah, this feels really nice. In and out of the turf, it feels like a really nice sole for me. Then when it came to this, done. Game over. Swipe my card. That's what I'd be saying if I was in the bay because I've just learned that there's a significant competitive advantage towards this club over my own. That's enough to do it for me. You know, um, I, I, again, I always use the tour as a reference point, but, and we talked about this uh, a little bit earlier today, mm. was that Dylan Fortelli, his sand wedge is a custom-made TCB sand wedge that only he has because he tried the gap wedge, he liked the gapping, went right into a sand wedge, so he and only he has this one-off custom kind of wedge, right? Are most players doing that? Of course not. But when you're on tour, you kind of get one of those little specialty things. But if you're the consumer and you're walking into a golf store and you say to yourself, I want to start specializing my short game. I want to start specializing the partial shots and the shots I hit around my golf course based on turf conditions. This is a perfect example of saying, you know what, I, maybe I just need a five to nine iron and I'm going to use that pitching wedge that is going to match my wedge, is going to be a specialty wedge that's going to offer me a performance advantage. It's a great point, and you just made me think about something there. So I got this set four to pitch and wedge. Last year, I swapped out my four iron for an Apex Pro four iron because it launched higher, retained more ball speed. It was a little bit more I was looking for. Now I'm swapping out the pitch and wedge in the other set. I now have a five to nine iron in this particular set. Um, so, you know, we talk about combo sets. Well, you know, what we're talking about can entirely different characteristics based on what we require it to do. When people are talking about, we, we stress this all the time, we are an ag agnostic fitting facility. We do not care what brands are in your golf bag. Yep. We are looking solely on performance. And for us, the idea is when a customer's in the bay with you, right, Mike? Yep. They're looking to you know, hit their distances and find performance at any chance they can get. And this is this has shown that there's in this scenario, there's definitely a performance advantage. Yeah, and this is where also, you know, getting fit, you have the ability to try different lofts, different grinds, different bounces, and, um, you know, like you said, after that performance with that, you know, wet Voki wedge, that's a no-brainer for you. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, could be a game changer. I know you've, you've always not struggled with your wedges, but you've always wanted to perfect them, and that, that I think, can make a complete game changer for your game. And, again, a customer coming in and getting that experience or getting to test all that, I mean, you know, people leave here with bags they would never even think they they would get fit for. So, cool test. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Looking for those marginal gains everywhere we can get. And we've got 14 clubs. If I can gain an advantage over you by, you know, point one of a stroke with a driver, it's probably not a big deal. If I can do it 14 times against you, you know, over a four round event or three round event, whatever it might be, those are gonna snowball and accumulate into a significantly lower uh, total score. All right.
So this is, again, this is why we do these tests. We want to help you make better decisions when it comes to any part of your game, whether it be drivers, short game, your wedges especially. It's always very important to understand those, those scoring clubs. And this just proves, again, that when we put these things together, there can be an advantage when you are looking to specialize in your, in your set and hopefully you learn something today. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, remember, leave a comment below. If you like this or you're curious about other questions, ask them. We want to help answer those questions for you. As always, thanks for watching.